Hey people, it's Zach, and this isn't a video I really thought I needed to make, or would have to make, but I think, I think it's time that I move on and go to different frontiers. I've been making this kind of content for over a year at this point, and I'm tired of it. And so I think it's best if I pass the reins on to somebody who knows what they're doing. Which is why I'd like to introduce to you your new host for the show. Let me go get him. This is Bob. Bob will be taking over. I really feel like he's just the right person for the job. And so this is this is my final goodbye. Bob will be taking over from here on out. So thank you all for being amazing and goodbye. Yeah, I made a mistake. So I'm sure most of you have heard of Bob the Builder, right? I'm not talking about that gross, hunky Bob the Builder from the reboot. Hey, I'm talking about the old, short, round Bob I know from my childhood. Also, I had really bad allergies when I made this video, so that's why I sound a little sick. I dabbled in some Bob the Builder when I was growing up. Not a ton of it, but I had some DVDs of it, and I always enjoyed it. I actually used to want to be a carpenter, so Bob the Builder really allowed me to chase my carpentry dreams and never give up on them. I don't want to be a carpenter anymore. So Bob the Builder revolves around Bob. Oh my goodness. And he's a builder. Oh my goodness. And he has a bunch of talking machinery that are alive. And the episodes generally revolve around him and his machines going on silly little adventures while trying to fix things around their town. It's a charming show that I really enjoy. And if you haven't seen it, go on. Get on now, run along now. The one I grew up with was the stop motion one from the 90s and 2000s, and I think that's what most people think of when they picture the characters. Um, hi, so it's, um, kind of, um, like 2.30 in the morning right now, but I just wanted to make a quick disclaimer, um, it turns out I actually grew up with Bob the Builder Ready Steady Build, and not the original or Project Build It. Um, I think I was thinking of the commercials I saw for those. But, um, upon looking at my DVD collection, I do not have any physical media of the original Bob the Builder series. There's a chance I might have seen it on TV, but I do not remember that. So, um, but, um, you know, the characters look so similar that it, it kind of meshed together in my brain as the same thing. So, um, yeah, I didn't actually grow up with the original Bob the Builder. I'm sorry, but I do still prefer it over the CGI version. Alright, now back to not 2.30 in the morning, Zach. But in 2010, the series got sort of kind of rebooted with Ready Steady Build. In this series, everything's CGI now. Ooh, fancy. The animation actually looks pretty decent, and they did a pretty good job of translating all the characters you know and love to CGI. Like, they did not take any design liberties when switching to CGI. They are one-to-one -one carbon copies of the originals, which I like. Unfortunately, that wouldn't always be the case. This was actually the first full CGI Bob the Builder production. Ready Steady Build didn't come out until later that year. Congratulations, here's your prize. Anyways, I used to watch this movie a lot, and I used to think it was peak cinema. I think it was earlier this year, I decided to rewatch it for nostalgia's sake, but today we're gonna look at it again so I can have a fresh opinion on it. This is Bob the Builder in CGI. He has skin. Bob's front and center, even though I think he's more of a side character in this film. Logo at the top, and what in the world happened to this box? What, did I use the cover art as a napkin and then try to shove it back in the plastic with my eyes closed? I can't even read some of this text, but I also can't get the paper out to fix it since I don't want to tear the paper. We also got Spod back here, and he's an interesting character for several reasons. That's one of them. Bonus feature, build a house with Bob game. Hit entertainment, you madman! We got some questionable looking seagulls and oh, this film isn't rated. Oh, I don't know guys, my grandpa's pre-last words were Zacky, my boy, whatever you do, don't review movies that don't have any ratings, please. Also nurse, could I have Cloudy for a chance of meatballs? I don't want to disrespect his wishes. Too late, I already did. Let's continue on with the review. 
FBI reminding us that they're always watching you to see if you're pirating movies, except when they're not, which is 95% of the time. Look at this cute animated Bob the Builder in the corner. There's absolutely no reason for him to be here, but I don't care, damn it, he looks cute. I'll give it 6 out of 10. Why do all the singers sound like they have a stuffy nose? And also, am I crazy? Am I crazy, huh, Travis? Because I know that in the original series, the, hold on, let me get my stuffy nose voice, Bill, Trent, and Bird, Travis and Spud, playing together like good friends should. Line came towards the end of the song, but here it's at the beginning. That's such a weird change to make, why? Was the editor just like, Oh man, they said in order to get a raise, I need to innovate. Bingo. The movie begins with a panning shot of the town, and oh hey look, a pirate ship, that's probably not going to be important to the plot later, so I'm just going to go ahead and pretend I didn't see that. Oh man, another awesome day in Fix Him! Why do I already hate him? Who talks like that? Oh man, another awesome day at my desk! The ATV named Scrambler is pretty pumped because they're going to the museum to fix pillars. Wow, how exciting! They go to the museum and Bob starts fixing the pillars. Meanwhile, Spud goes inside and learns about Brickbeard the Pirate, who built Fixum, and the museum guy says that some people believe that he hit a golden hammer somewhere in the town. This guy is literally Bob. It's actually just Bob with a beard and longer hair. Anyway, Spud and Scrambler decide that they need to find the golden hammer and give it to Bob, so Spud goes inside to try and find the key to the chest, but he's a giant klutz and gets a helmet stuck on him. He goes outside and Scrambler decides the best course of action is to lift Spud up onto the roof so he can check the chimney. Well, I wonder how this is gonna go. Oh look, Bob finished the roof. Oh, oh, yep, yeah, there it is. Bob's pretty surprised by this and he asks them, and Scrambler tells him it's a surprise for him, and Bob's like, if you're gonna keep doing stuff like this, I don't want your surprise. Also, the museum guy looks like Bob. How many twin siblings do you have? Spud tells Scrambler that he found the key to the chest in the roof of the museum, finally a pirate that actually does a good job of hiding his treasure. So many pirates make their clues too obvious, but Brickbeard actually hid it in a place no one would probably look, the inside of the freaking roof. But when Spud opens up the chest, all he finds is a picture of a bear. But what does it mean? Let's find out! Or we can fade out. Ahoy there, shipmates! Uh, oh, oh, it's Brickbeard. He kind of recaps what we just saw, and it's like, we're only 10 minutes in, I don't need a recap already. Also, shouldn't you be dead? Pirates haven't been around for hundreds of years, and this town seems pretty old. Then we get back to the story, and we see the exact same panning shot we saw at the beginning. Hmm, the editor on this movie is astounding so far. Anyway, Spud starts babbling about how they're never gonna find the golden hammer, but Scrambler kind of drifts off into his own thing. He starts daydreaming about Brickbeard and his golden hammer. Yeah, movie, I know, it's only been several minutes since we last found out about this. We don't need all these recaps. How terrible do you think our memory is? Bob and his crew have another job today. This time at the toy store, they're gonna knock down a window and put in a bigger one. I can already see the chest. Lofty gets concerned since he doesn't want the teddy bears to be scared by the noise. So he moves them to the forest and then he heads back to knock down the window. Meanwhile, Spud is doing... more stupid things. He can't find the teddy bears, but then they find out that Lofty took them to the forest and Spud asks him, Why? He tells everyone it's because his siblings all died when they got hit by a wrecking ball and it was his job to get them out of the house, so he decided to take the teddy bears out of the house to heal his guilt and his trauma. Oh, sorry, I misheard that. He just did it because he's silly. Bob and the others agree to help, even the owner of the toy store. She looks like Bob. She looks like Bob. No! They go to the forest and they find out a bunch of foxes have taken the bears to give to this baby fox. Imagine if the baby fox just ripped the bear's head off right in front of Lofty. They leave one teddy bear for the fox, and when they head back to the toy store, Spud finds a teddy bear dressed up as a pirate in the cupboard, and underneath it is another chest. So is that cupboard already here when this lady moved into the toy store? Has she seriously never noticed it before? This can't be recent, since again, Blackbeard should have been dead for hundreds of years at this point. No wonder she needs those glasses. Anyways, when Spud and Scrambler open it up, they find a Picture of a dragon, let's see where it'll lead them. No, no, don't fade out again. Ahoy there, shipmates! Oh, it's a black beard again. Yeah, you don't need to recap the past 10 minutes. I remember it wasn't that long ago. This isn't gonna be a recurring thing, is it? We see the same panning shot again, and even has the same music cue to go along with it each time. Spud is still wailing about how they'll never find the golden hammer and scrambler. No, please stop recapping the story. I know the story of the golden hammer. This this is the third time we've seen this flashback, just stop! 
This time Bob and his crew are going to the school to repair a wall. When they get there, there's a dragon. Oh my goodness. Nah, it's actually just Ellen and the children. She looks like Bob. All the children look like Bob. Just stop! Muck notices a faded painting of a dragon on the wall, but Lofty knocks it over because he's very reckless. Muck is determined to find out what was on the wall, so she scoops up the bricks and goes to find a place to build her wall in peace. She goes over to the farm and talks to Farmer Pickles and his talking tractor, Travis. Meanwhile, Wendy calls Bob and tells him that Muck never came back to the yard, so the team goes out looking for her. She's decided to build her wall on this pile of mud. I can already see where this is going. The bricks start to sink, but when she tries to save the bricks, she becomes too heavy, and then she starts to sink. Luckily, Lofty is there to rescue her. If you hadn't destroyed her wall, then she wouldn't even be in this mess, so yeah, you better save her. They head back to the school and they rebuild the wall, and Bob's clones repaint the dragon so it isn't faded anymore. And later that night, they perform their dragon dance in front of it. I don't care about that. Spud and Scrambler have been searching the town all day for a dragon, but they can't find it. But then they see the dragon on the wall, and Spud notices the tongue is pointing at a brick. When he removes the brick, they find another chest with another... You know, why am I even telling you this? Blackbeard's about to explain it in just a moment anyways. Might as well just let him tell you. Ha <laughs> ha Another clue! Oh wow, the exact same shot of Fixum Harbor again. Go ahead, Scrambler, remind us about the Golden Hammer again, since you haven't drilled it into our brains enough already. Today, Bob and his team are going to an old lighthouse to fix it up. We also see Scoop being kind of annoying. He won't shut up about how he's the one that does all the big jobs. I'll be doing all the biggest jobs, as usual. But the big jobs are my jobs, and I do all the big jobs around here. These big jobs are easy, and I do all the big jobs around here. I do all the big jobs. He keeps trying to compete with this boat thingy that can also drive on land, and when he tries to carry a pile of dirt, he ends up falling into the water. Oh, surely he's learned his lesson, right? He then tries to pick up this piece of glass before the boat thingy, but he goes too fast and knocks it over. Oh, well, now he's learned his lesson, right? Then he rushes back to the yard to get cement bags, and the boat thingy heads to the store to get paint. But Farmer Pickles left a bunch of potatoes there for Bob, and Scoop grabs those instead of the cement bags. And then when he rushes back to the lighthouse, he loses control again and crashes into Bob and almost kills him. Bob's like, dude, what the heck, and Scoop apologizes to Bob and the boat thingy for trying to do all the big jobs, and they realize they can share the big jobs. Spud and Scrambler also find a well in the ground, and when they look inside the bucket at the bottom, they find another chest with another clue. No. This movie's boring. It's just the same thing over and over again. Literally. Also, wow, Brickbeard, I know you don't want people to find your treasure, but you could have made the drawings a bit more obvious. I thought this was a lamp. Ahoy, shipmates! Hi, Brickbeard. You just won't leave us alone, will you? Stop recapping the movie. I already know. My memory is actually pretty good. I don't need you coming in every 10 minutes to tell me what just happened. That's what the movie's for. Can you guess what happens next? The exact same panning shot of Fixum Harbor. Spud and Scrambler still can't find that blasted golden hammer. Oh, what is the golden hammer, you ask? Well, right on cue, Scrambler gives us a flashback for the six quintillionth time. Bob also can't find his computer, but luckily Dizzy knows where it's at. She's really good at finding things. Don't say that. Please don't ever say that because now she's gonna spend the next 10 minutes obsessing over finding things, isn't she? They head to the theater where they'll be working today. Dizzy thinks she sees Blackbeard on the beach, but when she gets Spud and Scrambler, he's already gone. She also speaks to this actor guy, and he's having trouble remembering his lines, but he's determined to not give up, and so is Dizzy. She thinks she hears Blackbeard behind a bush, but this causes Lofty to tear one of the backdrops. Bob starts to regret buying machinery that can talk, and Dizzy speaks to the actor guy again, and he once again tells her he's not gonna give up memorizing his lines. She she keeps trying to look for Blackbeard, but nobody believes her. But when she goes backstage, she finds out that the actor guy she's been talking to is Blackbeard. Well, actually, he's playing Blackbeard in a play, and later that night, he gives an outstanding performance, that is, until Spud comes onto the stage and ruins everything. Spud goes behind the stage and pulls a random lever, which causes his trap door to open, and inside is another chest. Spud swipes it from the after guy, and he gets locked inside, and I guess he just lives there now? Well, I guess he got out, since he appears behind Spud and Scrambler later on, and speaking of Spud and Scrambler, they find another clue. This time, it's a picture of a ship. Well, I've seen that darn panning shot of Fixum enough times to know that there is a massive ship at the harbor. Why don't you go there? Blackbeard does his regular check-in on us, and we see the same shot of Fixum again. Scrambler does his usual flashback, and today, Bob and his team are working at the harbor. They're gonna fix up Brickbeard's old ship. 
You're telling me this whole time this ship has just been sitting around in plain sight in the harbor and Scrambler and Spud haven't thought of checking there? Like, that should have been the first place you checked, you know how much time that would have saved you? You know how much pain that would have saved everyone around you? Rowley is talking to his seagull friend and she seems extremely mad today. Bob and his team build a platform and move the ship onto it and she is even madder now. They also put up supports on the sides, but Rowley and Spud and Scrambler climb up on board before they can set them in concrete. And because of this, the ship ends up rolling into the water and Bob is speechless. Luckily, Rowley's seagull friend is able to unravel the sails and they're able to sail back to shore. I don't know how Spud was able to park the boat without crashing it, but I just don't want to think about it. Bob gets lifted up to the crow's nest and he finds out why the seagull lady is so upset, it's because her eggs were in there. Oh, it all makes sense now! Bob also finds another treasure chest, and later that night, Spud and Scrambler give it to him, and the golden hammer is inside the end. Imagine if it was another clue. Also, I hope Bob donated that hammer to the museum, because he does not need a pure gold hammer with jewels on it just sitting in his toolbox. So, yeah, yada yada yada, that was my opinion on Bob the Builder, the golden hammer. It's... Okay. I like the characters, especially Rowley! I have nostalgia for all of them. Spud made me laugh, it doesn't matter what he says, literally any word he says in his voice makes me smile. Where do you think Brickbit hid the golden hammer scrambler? But that's where the positives end, unfortunately. I just can't get over how they show you that same shot of fix them like six times, they could have changed it up at least a little bit. And oh my goodness, Blackbeard interrupting the story every ten minutes to recap what just happened is absolutely absurd. There's there's no reason for it to be that way. I get that this film is made for children, but even a two-second old newborn could remember the stuff in this movie. It's incredibly simple, there's no need for a recap every ten minutes. Maybe one at the halfway point, maybe, would be okay, but six, one every ten minutes. No, it just gets so old. Also, it's literally just the same story every time. It starts with Spud and Scrambler talking about Brickbeard. Bob and his team go to a job that connects with the clue. One of Bob's machines does something stupid, learns a lesson, and at the end, Spud and Scrambler find the next clue. Blackbeard makes me want to shoot him, rinse and repeat. And I know that this is Bob the Builder, which isn't known for the most quality writing, but this is just lazy. On the Zacker Attacker Movie Raider, this is getting a 4 out of 10. If you came up with a unique story and got rid of those stupid recaps, then this would actually be a pretty decent movie. But nope, instead you put my boy Rowley into a subpar movie, which I don't appreciate. But hey, again, this movie is aimed at kids, and if you ask the average eight-year-old what they think of it, they'll probably tell you it's the best thing ever. Hey guys, it's Zach, the eight-year-old menace here, and um, I just kind of wanted to make a quick video and um, talk, talk to you guys and... I just got home from school actually and um, I'm gonna film this instead of doing my homework. I just kind of wanted to um, tell you why I love Bob the Builder so much. Um, I love Bob the Builder. He's the best. Um, I respect him more than I respect my parents. And you know what? This movie has made me realize just how much I enjoy doing this. I'm not going anywhere. I still have so many of my precious childhood movies filled with cherished memories to just tear apart. But my desk is a little broken right now, so maybe Bob the Builder can help me fix it. So on the count of three, I'm going to pull up on my end, and I want you to push down on your end, okay? One, two, three. Will you suck at being a builder and a host?